You're watching Gaming Nest News, the only gaming news show that is 100% cruelty free. Congrats on making it halfway through the month of April. Keep it up! This week on GNN. Try to memorize Wilbin's bit on The Last of Us and Days Gone, cause he's first up. Then, Richard can't control his glee about control. More on that in a little while. And to end it off, Project Supervillain gives us the lowdown on PlayStation Store controversy. Gotta love their takes. All that today on GNN. Now let's pass it off to your excellent host this week, Joker! Hello again, guys, gals, and non-binary pals, and welcome back to another week here of Gaming Nest News. It's Joker once again, bringing you the news you want to know for the last couple of weeks or the last little bit. So, we do have quite a bit in store for us coming up this week. Uh, if you do notice, I am joined by my special guest, Minnie, uh, who will be uh, helping me out today, at least for a little bit. Uh, as we do talk about uh, some of the things uh, that I've hit in the last couple of weeks. Uh, first up, we've got Wilden. Uh, he's going to be bringing us a, a review, or at least a look back here from Sony. Uh, some of the gate, some of the games that they've released here in recent times. And so take a look and, and see exactly what he's got to say. So Wilden, go ahead. Let's see what you've got to say. Hey y'all, Wilden here. And this week we're talking about PlayStation. Yes, that's right. PlayStation's got all kinds of stuff going on. Not necessarily great news, but things are happening. Uh, so, there was a big news thing that came out about Sony Ben. Uh, apparently, Days Gone, which I know is... Some people say it's an underrated game, but I feel like I've heard a lot of people talk about it. So I don't know how underrated it actually is, or people just like saying it is. Uh, they were talking about pitching a couple years ago, back in 2019, a sequel. Oh, to Days Gone, Days Gone 2, uh, apparently that got denied and not happening because apparently it didn't seem to make as much as they wanted it to, even though critically it did pretty okay, and it made like a reasonable amount of money. And there were people that were clamming for it, uh, I feel like the series maybe deserved another shot to like fix some things up, I played a little bit of it myself, it's, it's like a alright enough game I think, it was like fun enough to play. Uh, but they came out and said, hey, the sequel's not happening, and then they kind of got shifted over to potentially Last of Us Remake? Yeah, that's right, I said that. I didn't think I'd say that, but here here we are. Yes, that's right, apparently there's been ideas spread around that they are working on a remake to the first Last of Us? Why? Money, I guess. Money, the show's coming out, so why not? Is it a little soon? Yes. Is it probably way more than a little soon? Like, way too soon? Yes. But it's happening. Supposedly there were talks as well as they're maybe doing a remake of Uncharted 1 originally, but after like looking into it and doing all this facts, I guess, they were saying, hey, Sony's like, this is a little too much effort and too much money to redo this whole thing if we're going to try to redo Uncharted 1. We could save a lot of cash and probably make as much if we just remake Last of Us 1. Again? Sort of update? I don't know, it's confusing, because you got, you got The Last of Us, and then you had, like, The Last of Us, like, HD, then you had The Last of Us, like, new HD upgrade recently so it's all kinds of confusing i don't know what's going on there either on top of all this sony came out this week and said hey we got some updates on things we're getting our first official updated patch that's happened and it's supposed to implement certain changes to like parties and the way like things look but the big issue that everybody's had since PlayStation launch been storage. Where's extra storage? There's supposed to be these little things that we can input into the PlayStation to give us extra internal storage. Well, PlayStation's like, we're still working on that. But until then, you can now store your PlayStation 5 games on external drive. So yay! Should have that been there since the beginning? Probably. But at least we're getting it now, somewhat. But yes, you'll be able to finally store some PS5 games at least somewhere else until we get that eternal memory 
upgrade thing we can buy. Who the heck knows when that's gonna happen. So it's, it's not quite what we're looking for, but it's something, I guess, to be happy about that too. Uh, yeah, Sony this week has had a lot of stuff coming out, especially earlier. Uh, they had the thing with MLB The Show and the whole deal with that, because that was like PlayStation exclusive, and then now I got moved to Game Pass, and it's left on there. Uh, so, it's not a lot of great news for PlayStation. PlayStation fans are not at their happiest right now. They're like, what's going on? Like, what the heck happened? It seems weird. It feels like, you know... They're kind of going a little cuckoo, almost like doing like Nintendo stuff, which doesn't make any sense. I mean, they're both like Japanese companies, but like Nintendo is Nintendo and does that thing. But Sony's getting a little wonky here with what's going on. Um, so that's that's <laughs> that's update with Sony. Uh, who the heck knows what's gonna happen these next coming weeks? Hopefully, Sony gets some sort of good news uh, coming up. Something they need like a new. Game, I mean, there's games coming out, you know, you got Rectoral and other stuff coming, but we need, like, a new something. Like, a new PlayStation thing, a new announcement, a PS Plus, PS Now, combos thing. I don't know, something to kind of get back on track here, because even PlayStation fan base is like, come on, guys, like, Xbox is, like, this whole Game Pass thing is pretty good, and, like, I know you're all trying here, but you're all not really doing all that much and just letting all this stuff happen, so what's going on? Uh... But we'll have to wait and see what's happening there. Uh, but for now, we're going to have to see how it plays out. Until next time, guys, I'm Wilden, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks again, Wilden, for that look at some of those Sony games like Days Gone and The Last of Us. I know those were pretty well-made games and usually pretty well-received. Uh, by the community at large. So it's a good to take a look back at those and, and see what they've provided for us. So thanks again for that. Richard is coming back here this week and he's got a look at a game that was released in 2019 and did not get a whole lot of, of C and play, but received some pretty good reviews. Richard, let's take a look at what you have to say about Control. This is Zachariah Trench, the director of the Federal Bureau of Control. Imagine you're sitting in a room. The only decoration in it is a poster. It doesn't matter what the poster is of, just that it's there. And sometimes you think you can hear something coming from the other side of the poster. Something scary and alien. And exciting. And as far as you know, the room that you're in is the whole world. So maybe you want there to be something behind the poster. And all you have to do is reach your hand out and pull it down yourself. Once in a while, a game comes along that is so neat, so interesting, that you want to talk about to your friends, to Twitter, to anyone that can listen. And I think Control kind of makes that really difficult to do by virtue of its own presentation. Sure, it's simple enough to chalk everything Control throws at you with, it's just like if the SCP Foundation wiki was a video game, and in that way, you would kind of be right. But diluting it down to something so amateurish and simple robs the game of its storytelling, atmosphere, and narrative depth. You play as Jesse Faden, the lone survivor of an impossible altered world event from 17 years ago, who has been searching for the answers to why these terrible things happened since her childhood. With the help of a supernatural, extra-dimensional partner, she stumbles upon the oldest house, a building with anti-memetic properties for the protection of both itself, the people, and the objects within. And if you don't already know its location, you'll never be able to find it, let alone even see it properly. And in this unknowable and non-Euclidean space in the middle of New York that is shifting around you, the US government has set up the Federal Bureau of Control, which monitors, secures, protects, 
and studies anomalies from other planes of existence. And matching with this concept, the rooms and places in this impossible building don't have to line up correctly or make sense with normal level geometry, because that's not how this game is built. The overly oppressive, brutalist architecture of a major government office is mixed into and taken over by a rapidly shifting and expanding game world that more than breaks the bounds of what you'd expect from the level geometry. This is an experiment in level design meant to disturb and possibly confuse and unease the player to great effect. Now, I know I just threw a lot of jargon at you in the last little bit, but control is nothing if not thorough on its lore. Between collectible files, audio logs, videos on TVs and slide projectors, and a telephone directly connecting you to beings from another plane of existence and to the mind of a dead man, the amount of quality of dedicated, realistic writing to rationalize these phenomena with both real and fake science and also some pseudoscience is staggering. The information is easy to digest and understand, and you can begin to piece together the puzzle of what happened in the Bureau's walls relatively early on. Presentation is Control's strongest suit, and the choice of color and lighting to convey danger in the path forward is one of its key aspects. Something like chromatic aberration on particle effects and waves and trailing off of some enemies distorts what you're looking at and makes it seem like they are barely existing in your world, just pushing past the threshold to try and kill you. Jesse Faden may be the main character of this game, but the real star is the oldest house, where the Bureau exists. Your adventure may give you the answers that Jesse has been looking for for almost the past two decades, but the oldest house has stood for time immemorial. You can tell just how much love and care went into designing an inherently physically impossible space, and scenes that manipulate and contort the environment to highlight this are superb. Files and documents talking about the prehistory of the Bureau are scant, leaving just enough detail out to let your mind rush with possibility. As with any other Remedy-style action game, you have a plethora of options in combat, each of them as viable as the others in the right hands. I myself maxed out the damage of my telekinetic throw and boosted the attack power of my charged sniper shot in order to annihilate most enemy encounters in one shot or fairly quickly, but full frontal combat with a shield and shotgun are almost just as good. The game is suited to the playstyles it gives you, and only certain scenarios require that you may have to step outside your comfort zone and your chosen weapon sets for a brief time. And that's mostly what Control is about. Possibility. The idea that Remedy can take their brand new IP and mix it and match it with their past ones to create new stories, new scenarios, and breathe life into their other beloved franchises is really important when you have a legacy like they do. And throughout the game itself, not knowing what you're about to encounter next, where you'll go, what you'll see when you get there, and how the hiss is taking over the building and how you can stop it, all of these things float in your head as you play and it's honestly incredibly engaging. The world and its characters are fleshed out well and can be incredibly deep at times, which is a remedy strong suit, but I wonder if putting the story in this impossible setting lended itself to exploring the more human things just below the surface and making that connection to something familiar that much more interesting. Let's see if I can do this in one sentence. Control is a third-person action shooter metroidvania dealing with an impossible space and objects of power that break the very laws of physics. I don't know why I didn't pick the game up sooner. The combat is fluid and interesting and might not be the deepest thing in the world, but it's fun and varied enough, let alone challenging enough, that despite the fact that I died a fair number of times, I never wanted to give up on the next push. To me, the combat sections are almost a bridge to the next story section, 
in which I fought monsters in order to get to the next scrap of lore that I wanted, but they're still done with love and skill and care. The Remedy combat style has cemented itself in their last two games, and it's fun and functional, and I can continue playing an entire series with it just as long as they kept small iterations and the design going. As for the writing, it sits in this really interesting place of legal plagiarism and original content. Having been on the internet at the height of the popularity SCP wiki, I read probably far more entries than I should have. Uh, for those who don't know, the SCP wiki is a fictional site offering descriptions of items of otherworldly properties or impossible powers, such as, let's say, SCP-294, a coffee vending machine that will always dispense what is asked of it within the limitations of the current reality it habits, even if that happens to be something like liquid molten gold. Control takes concepts and ideas from this site and makes them a bit more tangible and real, since you can actually witness the effects of these objects having on the game world. One of the first objects you come across is a simple 8-inch floppy disk from bygone era that has the ability to redirect kinetic energy and throw objects with telekinesis, and binding that to yourself gives you the same powers. These objects all have the same amount of love and care in their descriptions and classifications as any SCP entry, but with the same budget affording other games full in-universe novels of quality within them. Reading the logs and lore of this world is fascinating, and a great way to spend a few hours. There are characters in the game like Dr. Darling, who you really only see in videos and recordings, and he has real depth, and it makes sense as scientists and researchers trying to understand the world around them as their worldview crumbles apart upon the discovery of new anomalous beings again and again and again. And the fact that he takes joy in all of this is really indicative of his character as head researcher. Each one has experienced heavy and incredible loss as part of this very dangerous job, and they have to keep rolling with these punches in order to keep the world safe and understand how these objects work. It's morbid and exhausting and incredibly interesting to me. One other such character, Zachariah Trench, the previous director of the Bureau, has been dead from the very start of the game, and yet he's a major guiding force on everything you do. Dealing with and persevering through, and despite death and loss, is a powerful tool to draw players in, and it's really incredibly engaging. It's what a person does in times of adversity that show their true character, and their setting and story work really well to humanize these characters and make them feel like they are real people. Eventually, Control almost normalizes these weird interactions with the world, but not in a way that fails to continue to surprise you. You just get indoctrinated into this universe, mentally prepared for the next crazy thing headed your way even if you don't know what it is around that next corner. It makes you feel like you're an entry-level employee, catching up with the rest of your colleagues until seeing things like an anchor that duplicates clocks en masse is part of the norm and part of the charm. You stop asking, what? And start asking, why? And Control gladly feeds your curiosity and brings it back down to Earth for you to understand. It's a hard thing to balance, and I think Control really nails it. I think Control is a very tightly designed, well-built game with an engaging story and far more interesting setting than the story we are being told. Sequels and crossovers are likely to continue to happen in the future, which will expand on the history and the future of the oldest house and the world around it, which will be the most interesting thing for me to see going forward. In this setting, we're seeing endless possibility in front of us when it comes to story and characters, and I very much hope Remedy takes this home run it had with Control and makes something even better with it. And right now, the poster is really, really close to being torn off the wall. I hope that with whatever sequel or anything that comes out after this, it doesn't turn out that there's nothing actually behind it after all. Thanks again, Richard, for that look at Control. Did receive that release there on the Switch in 2020, so it's a good way 
for people to look back at this game that is kind of that psychological thriller uh, taking a look at, at what exactly it brings to the table and it's something I, I, I feel like you should probably take a look at if you're into those kind of games with the really deep underworld secret government agencies type of type of thing so definitely a good look thanks again Richard for that now before we move on here uh, we do again want to mention that we do have clips and videos available we want you to bring your clips and videos in to us to have on the show we want to make sure that we broadcast you and your talents to the world so if you have anything that you want to showcase to the world if you have gaming clips if you have news bits news bites that you want to share please feel free to send us that information send it at info at nesthq.online we'll make sure to get in contact with you make sure to work with you so that you can see your clips your videos your plays here on gaming nest news we love to have you before we wrap up today's show we cannot forget our boys over at project supervillain they've got uh, a look at some sad news that hit us here within the last month uh that is really de uh, depressing for a lot of players especially vin players of vintage consoles like the playstation 3 or the sony vita so project supervillain let's take a look at those legacy stores take it away Oh man, I haven't played some of these games in a long time. You just, you can't beat classic PS3 games. Dude, this is awesome. We've got Red Dead Redemption. I got Heavy Rain. I got Silent Hill Homecoming. I got Splinter Cell Trilogy, God of War 3. Dude, I can't wait to get down to some of these. I'm gonna start playing right now. Ah! Ah! Who are you? What are you doing in my house? Those games aren't available anymore. Wait, what do you mean they're not available? I, I purchased these things. These are mine. I'm a PlayStation rep and I'm here to seize your goods. No, 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 man. You know, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna play some Red Dead Redemption right now, actually. Okay, maybe, maybe I'll play Heavy Rain, actually. That one's good. Uh, Silent Hill? That was one of my favorite. Yeah. Oh, this one's not available either. Uh, Splinter Cell, then. I'll play Splinter, no. No, listen, man, listen. I've only got one left. I got, got, hey, Wait! Listen, man, I paid good money for every single one of those. You can't take all that. You know what? No, I'm taking some of those back, actually. Those are mine. No. Come on! Come on! No, man, listen. Oh, God. Dudes, it's your boys from Project Supervillain. We're back with some more news. We're your hosts. I'm Mark Drifter. I'm Kill Boss. And today we're jumping into the PlayStation controversy that's happening uh, right now. So in the month of April here, we're, that's, we're back. By the way, we took a week off. I hope you didn't miss us too much. But uh, anyways, we've got stuff regarding PlayStation 3, the PSP, and the PS Vita. They're essentially fucking with the store, guys. And we're gonna get into that right now. So, if you haven't heard by this point, they are going to be closing down the PlayStation stores almost entirely. There will still be a few features that are kicking around. But yeah, as of July 2nd, the PlayStation 3 and the PSP stores will be uh, closing down. And then following that in August, on August 27th, the PS Vita store is also going to be closing down a number of services. So, there are still a few things, though, that are sticking around. So, like, you can still re-download games that you've already purchased. Don't know how long that'll be a thing for, hopefully for a while yet, but that's one of the things that has been worrying a lot of people. And brace yourselves, because that's probably the only real good news we've got here, aside from a couple other things here. Right. Um, you can re-download purchased games, yeah, like you said, but you can also uh, access previously purchased media, uh, like movies and, and, and TV shows that you may have downloaded in the past. Yep. Um, you can also redeem PlayStation Plus vouchers, but that's pretty much where it ends here. I think you can play You can games. play your PS Plus games too. That's it. So that's all That's all the, the good news we really have here because uh, essentially they're removing a bunch of stuff and you cannot do a lot of things from now on or from going forward. Here's what you can't do. 
you can no longer make purchases. So all of those games that Sony has had, especially ones that are exclusive to, you know, the PS3, PSP, PS Vita, I don't know how many there are, but you know what? It's probably a good chunk of them. You won't be able to download those anymore. That is kind of sad to see a lot of that stuff just vaporize. That's history right there. PlayStation history throughout the years just vanishing before your very eyes because, you know what, they just don't care about game preservation. Not we'll really. get into that a little bit more later. Um, but here's some other things you can't do anymore. Um, you, there's not going to be any MTX purchases or anything like that, so all that in-game stuff's going to be gone. Um, you can't redeem your PSN wallet vouchers, uh, like gift cards, those aren't going to be a thing anymore there. So for the funds that some people might still have kicking around in their wallets, you can get refunds for that stuff. Uh, if you're not planning on moving to the PS4 or PS5 and, you know, spending the money there, Sony does have a way to work out a refund. I'm sure there are stipulations, but there is that bit of good news too. But again, yeah, they're not doing any more vouchers for uh, funds. You can't add any funds on the PlayStation 3 stores or anything like that. Of course, you guys probably saw our skit there. I mean, it was a bit embellished. <laughs> Obviously, you can still play your old physical games right now, but the question is whether or not uh, these digital games are going to be preserved throughout the years. and. Uh, if they're going to keep these games available for you to play later on. Are they just going to take the st store down completely where you can't actually access anything on these game so uh, consoles anymore? Because we all know that like Steam could do that anytime or any yeah. other place could do that. They could just be like, oh no, that's you're not yours anymore. You signed uh, a U uh, EULA, so it's like, oh, okay, great. Now, thankfully, end user license agreements do not uh, go above the law. Uh, there could be some controversy there for sure. I guarantee if uh, you know they tried to take away purchases that people have made, especially en masse, hundreds of them like that there would be some lawsuits up the ass definitely yeah. but you know that's one of the things that uh, that worries us is if this is going to happen with sony and now that is a worst case scenario odds are for quite a while you will still be able to download games you've previously purchased but it's not out of the realm of possibility when you consider how corporations generally tend to uh, look at game preservation yeah, so that's why we wanted to talk about that today. Uh, it's just a really sketchy thing to think about, uh, losing access to all these classic games, losing access to all that history. And as a gamer, seeing all the history just getting wiped out like that is is really sad to see. I wish they would be more like Xbox, where they're trying to actually have this backwards compatibility going on. You can play so many of the original Xbox games on the Xbox One X, and that is freaking awesome, honestly. That's what every like every major hardware publisher should be doing. It literally only draws more people to want to purchase your console. And, you know, I get that they're making money on people double dipping in the stores and stuff like that, but, you know, you are going to still attract large crowds of people to buy your console and it's just a huge plus if you've got backwards compatibility there because people can then take their old libraries and still enjoy them on more modern hardware yeah i think that's super important not just for preserving the games themselves but you know people's sentimental experiences with them it's like companies just don't understand that people want to play games simply because they are fun it doesn't have to do with what's new and what's hot a lot of times don't get me wrong lots of great games are coming out gaming is getting a lot better just better and better there it has its downsides but you know what people still like to go back and play other old games which were also fun as well which they had good experiences with it is uh it's a tragedy to see this kind of stuff going on and again right now we're not at that worst case scenario yet uh so we're hoping it never gets to there but i mean come on guys just the fact that you can't get these games easily anymore that's right uh, is is really another stupid thing about this like people are resorting to pirating and stuff way more often now and for good reason i mean i'm not going to blame them really like you if can't a company, access these games that's right yeah if a company doesn't provide you a way to pay for their product if they make it less convenient for you to go to them for something People are going to find another way to do that. They are going to still find a way to enjoy the experiences they want to enjoy. Yarr! Yeah, well, I'm not actually a pirate, guys, but uh, maybe one day I will be because these stupid freaking policies and, and removing art uh, in the medium here is just so sad to see. And I will be damned if I'm never going to be able to play some of these classic games again. Like, fuck off. That's same thing, right. Same thing with Nintendo. You guys are doing the same thing over there with your virtual library. It's like, guys... We want to play your old games, let us play them, let us buy them from you, 
and you will get more money. It's so simple. I know, but they apparently just don't want money, even though that would be the exact opposite of everything they have displayed in all of their other ways of clawing pennies from people with microtransactions and, you know, double dipping for old games and things like that. It just makes no sense. Like, why would you not want to provide these and get yourself some extra cash? And, you know, again, people are going to find a way to play these games, and I think that, honestly, very, very important that people do that kind of thing because... In the end, gamers are the only ones that are going to care enough to preserve these games. Yeah, and these companies, they'll have to learn the hard way if we want to see some actual change in this regard. Uh, but that's really all we've got to talk about, guys. Hopefully next week we'll have something a little bit brighter to talk about. As always, it's kind of a bleak season in regards to uh, video game news. We'll start seeing some cool stuff probably around June when E3 happens and all that good stuff. Um, but until then, I guess we'll just keep coming at you with some <laughs> shitty controversies from stupid publishers. We'll keep it real, we promise. Until then, see you guys next time. Enjoy the rest of the show. Reach out. Thanks again, Kill Boss and Arc Drifter, for that look there. It is, again, a, a sad look. Uh, and it's uh, unfortunate, but it's one of those things that does happen with time with these cloud-based services, especially with older consoles like the PlayStation 3, like the Vita, the PSP, having those mobile stores, those legacy stores shut down. It's it's very unfortunate because it's not as easy to get those digital copies anymore. Even some of the games aren't even uh, forward transcribed to the PS4 or the PS5 or you know, even the PSP and the Vita. There's really no other place that you can really consistently play those types of games. So it is unfortunate that Sony decided to pull the plug on the stores and uh, you know, again, we're, we're kind of saddened at the loss of those legacy stores, but hopefully they can progress through and bring some of those games forward or see ports uh, to current uh, consoles, much like the Persona 4 Golden port to PC uh, that we saw from the Persona 4 Golden uh, port of Vita. You know, so hopefully we see more things like that happening here in the future. Uh, again, uh, we do, uh, you know, we do want to see your clips and your videos, and it looks like we do have a couple of clips here. But let's take a look and see what you guys have got for us. Ow. <laughs> I got thrown out of the bounds of the game. So I'm not going to be able to get that stuff. Are you serious? <laughs> I am dead fucking serious. Oh, there we go. It, it transported me back. I don't know what happened, but it just threw me into the abyss. It was like, hey, yeet. <laughs> <laughs> Pitching is a wild day. <laughs> Paimon even did the whole like, why don't we go explore the area ahead of us another time? Thanks again for your clips. We'll make sure, again, if you want to see your clips here just like that, please send them to us at info at nesthq.online. We'll make sure we get them here on Gaming Nest News. That is going to be it here for this week at Gaming Nest News. We thank you for joining us here on the broadcast here on, on uh, Twitch. Don't forget to hit that like button and that follow button. Make sure you tune in every week because we do have some pretty good things coming up here at... Uh, Gaming Nest News and here at National Esports Tournament. We do have some tournaments coming up here soon. If you want to be involved in participating, make sure you stay tuned to all of our social media, Facebook and Twitter as well. And get that information to you and you might be able to see yourself here on the National Esports Tournament stream broadcast live in front of in front of thousands of people. You never know. So keep an eye out for that and stay tuned. For everybody here at Gaming Nest News, once again, my name is Joker. We thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next week for more Gaming Nest News.